All right, guys, we're back at Jake's Speed and Custom. We're going to try to get Goliath fixed. That's right, guys. We came up with a possible solution to fix this Jake brake situation on Goliath. We're going to give it a try before we make that decision to just replace the head. So what we're going to do is on that third Jake brake assembly, excuse me, on that center Jake brake assembly, uh, one bolt is broken off in the head. The other embossment in the head that the bolt threads into is broken out. So there's nothing there to even thread into. So what we're going to try to do is weld some studs in there. So I went to another friend of mine's shop the other day, uh, Route 64 Speed and Custom over there in uh, Murphy. And he gave me two 7 16ths ARP head bolts for like a small block Chevy. Um, they should be super strong. And we're gonna try to weld those into the head in the right spot coming up so that that Jake brake assembly will come on. And then we just clamp it down with some nuts. That way it should hopefully be a permanent fix. So let me show what we've got going on so far. I've already got the valve cover taken apart. I've got the Jake brakes removed. And this time I even took off the lower valve cover just to give us more room. I say us, to give Jake more room. Jake's gonna do all the welding. I'm not a good TIG welder. I uh, just haven't had enough time to practice. And Jake is really, really good at his craft. So we took the lower valve cover off as well as the upper so that he had more clearance in there to get in there with the TIG welder and, uh, and do it. So right now I've got everything apart. I've got the engine covered up with some plastic and some towels because I've got to do a little grinding in there in order to give him a good welding surface. And we need that surface to be flush when it's all said and done. So I'm gonna bevel it, that way his weld will somewhat countersink because there is a spacer that's gotta go back on top of that surface before the Jake brake housing goes back on. So let me show you what we've done so far. All right guys, here's a look from up top. Remember our affected area is down there. That's the one that the bolt is still in the hole. And this one here that I got covered up at the moment. Right there is the embossment that's broken out. So all this here is just so that as we're grinding, we can try to minimize how much material gets deposited in the engine. You know, metal shavings in an engine is never a good combination. So we're just trying to be very diligent about covering this up, keeping it clean. Uh, once it's ground out, I'm uh, gonna get in here with some brake clean and really clean off all the oil residue the best we can. And then we'll probably take a map torch and go in there and just heat up the surfaces really good and also burn off and vaporize any other residue that may be there. Because any type of contamination with TIG welding, well, any kind of welding, but especially with TIG welding, can really compromise the weld. And this is a fairly high pressure application. We don't want any compromises. We want it done right. So that's how we're gonna do it. All right, guys, as you can see, I got that edge there all beveled out. Got that one beveled out and I have cut my studs to length. So ideally, the long one will go right down here. The short one will go right here. And once they're welded in nice and straight, we should be able to slide the Jake brake housing right down over top and torque it back to spec. All right, guys, as you can see there, Jake is uh, hitting it with a torch real quick just to burn off any residual oil residue or um, brake clean residue so that we have a good, strong weld. Then we're gonna tack the studs in place, set the Jake brake on, make sure that everything lines up good, take the Jake brake back off, and if it's good, he'll do the final weld on it. Hopefully that'll work out. All right, guys, as you can see, we got the stud tacked in and leveled off. And what we've been doing is using the spacer block as a guide. Once Let me show you. that stud tacked in, it goes through this hole. We set this block back down, bolt these in. That way we can move that stud in or out and get it 
as aligned as we possibly can with this hole to keep it straight. So we tack it, put this on, tap it, tack it another spot, put this back on, adjust the stud where it needed to be, and then to the third tack down by the bottom. That way with the tack to three different places, that stud shouldn't move too much more as we weld it and the bar should go back on smoothly when it's all said and done. Now time to do all the finished welding on it and make it really strong. All right guys, check it out. We now have two welded in studs. Now, if you look, there's a little bit of a bevel at the bottom of the studs. So what we're gonna do is on the spacer bracket on the bottom side, we're just going to chamfer it a little bit to compensate for that so that this still sits flush down on the head. In addition to that, we still have to re-weld the broken one. So you see it's in two pieces. We need to mend that first. Well guys, I cannot express to you how absolutely irritated I am with myself right now. As you saw in that last clip, we got the studs welded in, everything was lined up. I was excited, it was time for reassembly. Well, as I was cleaning up those bars and getting ready to re-weld that one and champ from the bottom to clear for the weld on the bottom of the stud, the light bulb went off in my head and I realized something detrimental that I'd forgotten. When I was taking measurements to know how long those studs needed to be to leave me enough thread on the top of it in order to bolt the J-brick housings down, I forgot to calculate in the thickness of those spacer blocks. So when it's all said and done, those studs don't stick through the J-brick housings. They're not gonna work. We've already got them all welded in, nice and pretty. So, those studs I got from a friend of mine named Bill over at Route 64 Speed Shop in Murphy. So Jake's let me use his truck. I'm gonna run over there and see if he's got two more because we're gonna have to cut off the studs. Oh, this drives me crazy. We're gonna have to cut off the studs that we just welded in and weld in new studs at the right height. I'm fuming with myself right now, and it's my own fault. You know, Jake welded it in where I told him to weld it. I cut the studs, I prepped everything. I did all the work except for the actual welding. I just, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'm so aggravated with myself. I don't know what to say. This is not a small project. It's a pain in the butt. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon. We've been working on it since nine o'clock this morning. And now I have to cut it apart and do it again. I don't know. And, and that's even hoping that Bill's got two more of those studs that he can sell me without having to buy a whole kit. A whole stud kit was like $200. He gave me those two studs for 10 bucks. I'm hoping he's got two more laying around. Man, all right, I'll be back in a little bit. Hopefully this works out. Hey guys, it looks like I got lucky. Bill had two more studs. So. Sorry about the noise. Jake's over there raising another truck up onto a lift. So yeah, now I gotta cut these other studs out so Jake can weld these in. And let me show you where I made my mistake more specifically. Right. So there's the Jake brake housing. And these are the spacers. And when this goes together on the truck, this spacer sits on the head surface and then the Jake brake sits on top of the head. And the way I welded the studs, they only came up to about here. So now the newer studs should be able to go through there and still stick up far enough. In fact, they're still just a tiny bit too long. So I'm gonna try to countersink them into the head surface a little bit, or I'll just cut a little bit off of here, 
or I might even just use some really thick washers at the top to uh, take up the extra space so that I don't bottom the nut out on the stud before I get the proper torque on the actual jake brake housing. There's one of my pretty studs that's already in and I'm gonna have to cut out. But first I gotta cover this engine back up with plastic because I get a cut and I don't want metal going down into the engine. Guys, I know some YouTubers would have just done this behind the scenes, welded it all in at the end, go, I oh, look, perfect, pretty. I'm not like that. I screwed up here. And uh, that's part of my punishment on letting you all know that I screwed up. Because uh, it's, I told you before on my channel, I want to keep it real. The good, the bad, the ugly. This is one of the bad and the uglies. So, uh, yeah, I get to fix my own mistake on this one. All right, guys, as you can see there, got the engine covered with plastic. Some rags stuffed down the little holes. I'm gonna try to cut those out. All right, guys, as you can see, I got that stud cut out. Got that one cut back out and flush. Notice got a shop vac here too. I had the shop vac running while I was cutting. I show you that while I was doing it because it made so much noise, but uh, I actually had it angled so that most of the debris that I was cutting off with the cutting wheel was directed at the opening to the shop vac hose to try to minimize how much metal shavings got dispersed everywhere. So hopefully the shop vac got most of it. Got a little here that I'll blow off and then I'll run a magnet around the bottom when we're all done with the grinding. All right, everything's all cleaned up. We're going in for round two. Heating it up again, drying it out. We'll try this a second time. So here's the jig that we set up with all three bolts in place. That way I can try to ensure the alignment the best we can. Now we got that spacer block jigged up on the welding table. We'll try to get it all welded back together straight. You can see our studs are in place. Both of the spacer bars are back in place. So I need to run the fuel injector wires and the Jake brake wires back up, get them zip tied and secured. Then I can throw the lower valve cover on, then worry about the upper. Now let's get this puppy back together. Guys, today I'm back here working on Goliath and it's not going as good as we hoped. So when you last saw, we were at Jake's. We welded the studs in. Realized I screwed up, cut the studs back out, welded studs in a second time, got it all right. And then we went to torque everything down. One of the studs that we welded in, I guess because we couldn't get it far enough down in and get a really good solid penetration, it broke out when we were only about two thirds of the torque rating. Um, so I was a little bummed about that. 
but it was nine o'clock at night. We were exhausted. And I just said, you know what? That's it. I'm done putting the valve cover back on. I need to get this thing home so that, you know, he could get home and go to bed. So I did. Um, but in the process of grinding out the stud after we had to cut it, after we installed it the first time and I screwed it up royally, um, I had to basically grind a pocket in the top of the head so that I could recess that stud down in there enough and get a good weld around it, um, or so Jake could get a good weld around it, I should say. Um, in my grinding process, I actually broke through the, the bolt that we had previously welded in. And as my grinding little uh, tool slipped into the hole, it hit the stud that was broken off in there and it spun in like, like to tighten up a little bit. And I was like, whoa, that's weird because that thing was like jammed in there. Well, apparently us welding on it, the heat had broken it loose. Um, I was able to take a flathead screwdriver tip on the end of my impact driver and I backed that screw out slowly but slowly because it didn't really grab with a flathead on it but it was enough that it, it got it to back out to where I could get a hold of it with my fingers. And, oh, sorry, I forgot. Yeah, I gotta cut my finger. Um, anyway, I was able to back it out with my fingers and uh, I was pretty impressed with that. Um, what I should have done then is not re-welded a stud in there and just waited until I found a replacement bolt and then just bolted it down and only used the one welded stud but it was late in the day, we wanted to get it done. So we were like, you know what? Let's just, uh, let's just, you know, go ahead and weld the studs back in like we we're planning on doing and, and just go from there. So we did. And then when we torqued it down, it broke. But anyway, so my thought was because that bolt had threaded out that maybe if I grind through it again, I can uh, get a bolt back in there. So I went ahead and ordered a couple bolts. So it's been two days since uh, you've seen that footage there at uh, Jake's. Today is 4th of July. So happy 4th of July, everybody. And I want to say that was Thursday. No, that was Wednesday we were at Jake's. Yeah, so it's, it's been more than two days. Um, but anyway, I, I found the OEM brand new parts from a shop over in Chattanooga. So Friday, I drove to Chattanooga, bought the brand new bolts, new washers, the whole nine yards. Today, I ground it out. I got down there but the threads were boogered just enough because of the welding that I wasn't able to get the bolt to start. I tried to thread chase it to clean it up and it actually broke the tap in it. And I don't know how, because I was super gentle and it didn't break it going in. It broke it trying to come back out. And I was working in slow. I know how to use a tap and die. Um, I got two full turns backwards on it before it would catch. And I could go back and forth. It was spinning nice and easy in and out like two turns but then it would it would stop at the bottom and stop trying to come out gave it just a little bit more to try to see if i can get through it and it broke a couple teeth off of the the tie or the, the die the tap yeah i guess it would be the tap so it broke a couple teeth off the tap um and i wasn't and i don't have another tap i wasn't able to clean it up enough to get the bolt in there so we're putting it back together with only a two-stage Jake break again, which really sucked because I really wanted the third stage, but um, sorry, Katie's trying to call in, but I want to finish this up before I talk to her. So um, basically everything else is torqued down. All I'm doing now is put the valve cover back on and it's just going to have to wait until I get a, a better chance to fix it. Um, it's just not going to happen today. We are leaving tomorrow to go to South Dakota. Um, you know, it's a two to three day drive to get out there, two and a half days, three, four, we may take our time. We got a couple days, but um, either way, I, I can't waste any more time on this because I need the truck tomorrow. So I've already got the valve cover halfway in and I just gotta pick it up, slide it the rest of the way. Eight bolts hold the valve cover back on, throw the doghouse back in and I am done. All right guys, as I'm sitting here tonight, just get ready to go to bed, editing this video so I can post it in the morning. I realize I never did a closing. So I hope you liked it. You get to see me in my pajamas. Uh, but I hope you liked the video. Please like, share, and subscribe. And until the next time I see you, keep those engines running. And stay tuned tomorrow. We start heading to South Dakota. So hopefully we get some driving footage with Goliath. And uh, hopefully everything goes well on the trip.